Good afternoon, everyone, or hello, everyone. Let's take into account varying time zones here. Welcome to the third seminar here from the Interdisciplinary Circular Economy Centre for Mineral-Based Construction Materials. Uh, I'm Leon Black, one of the co-investigators on the, the centre, and it's my pleasure today to welcome Dr. Maciek Zayak from Heidelberg Cement. Uh, Maciek did his PhD in Dijon, the University of Bourgogne, some years ago, and for a number of years now has worked at Heidelberg Cement as a principal scientist. Maciek and I have worked together on a couple of projects, but dare I say nothing as exciting as this one that he's going to talk about today. Um, so, you know, Maciek's going to talk about how, oh, I just realised that well, I've got this, I, I can't read the entire title because I've got various pop-up boxes over the slides. <coughs> so, Sorry. that's okay. Maciek's presentation today is how CO2 mineralization is driving the future of cement. Okay, a few house rules ahead of the presentation. I will... Okay. Uh, the, the meeting's being record, recorded, so if you don't wish to appear in the recording, please keep your camera off. We're going to have a, about 15, 20 minute presentation from Maciek. And after this is when we will take questions. I will be monitoring the chat throughout the presentation. So if you've got any questions then, you can put your questions via the chat, or then when the presentation is finished, raise your hand and we'll ask you to to give your presentation or to give your question then. Um, like I said, the presentation is being recorded. And so we will make the recording available after on the, the center's website. Uh, and it will be a link to that will be emailed to you. And it will also be sharing it on social media next week. Uh, and just, yeah. Uh, so I have jumped ahead of myself. I should have revised the slide, looked at the slides beforehand. So I said Maciek is the principal scientist at uh, in global R&D at Heidelberg Cement, based in Lyman, which is actually just outside of Heidelberg. Uh, his research for a number of years now has looked at developing innovative and sustainable products as a means of contribution to climate protection and generate added value for customers and the company. So it's how do we still ensure a good quality construction materials whilst reducing their environmental impact and uh, in improving their sustainability. So we said thank you to everybody who's attended. We've, uh, I notice here we've got 68 participants so far, so a very good attendance, thank you. A um, couple of links here just for everybody if you're unaware, the, department or the center's website, or you can contact us via the various different uh, methods there. So I will stop sharing and I will pass over to Maciek now. So over to you. Thank you, Maciek. So please let me know if you see my uh, my presentation. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. So, okay, so one more time. Uh, welcome everybody to my to my talk. I would like to speak with you about the application of a CO, CO2 mineralization to uh, cement industry. I divided my talk into two, two small sections. The first one, hopefully smaller one, will introduce uh, it will be introduction section and I show the context uh, regarding the project why we are doing the, the project and what brought, brought us into the CO2 mineralization of recycled concrete. And afterwards, I will share with you the, my experience with the uh, mineralization reactions and application of mineralized material for the cement production. Okay, so you should see now the, the, the second slide of the presentation. And this is, I think, today uh, trivial to say that the 
cement and concrete production is responsible for the significant CO2 emissions worldwide. And this is accounted between five to 9% of the industrial emissions, anthropogenic emissions. And this is related to the fact that the concrete is, that we are producing a lot of concrete. So I told this, this big volume of the concrete produce is related to the fact that concrete is a good and cheap material that allow to build the infrastructure. And the big challenge with the concrete is that it's produced, that the main properties of the concrete is made of, made of a cement and cement is produced from a, a clinker. A clinker is produced from limestone. And then with today's technology, it is very difficult to replace limestones by uh, all the alternative materials, or at least we at Hyderabad Cement, and I believe our competitors uh, would not able to identify the material that would allow us to replace limestone during the clean car production. And so we are looking for a lot of alternative methods to reduce the CO2 emissions. And, and then the several methods are possible. And here I listed one of the, uh, one, those methods here on the left-hand side, you see here the graph. And this is the graph that I took, took from GCCCA roadmap on the reduction emissions. And you see here the, those traditional and, and one of the new methods, and then basically all related to the efficiency, increasing efficiency of the either concrete or the cement uh, 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 production. This is what important. Those traditional methods will not allow us to achieve the CO2 targets. We need to look for the alternative methods. And you can clearly see in these graphs the biggest fraction, as so one method is related, the biggest fraction of the reduction of the emissions is related to the carbon capture and storage. That is believed to be the one of the most important technology according to the different roadmaps allowing to reduce the CO2 uh, emission. So carbon capture and storage and carbon capture and, and utilization. The, those technologies that are containing in most cases two sub-technologies. And as you see here on this, on this graph here on the slide number three, this is related to the um, separation of the CO2 from the waste gases. So they itself a carbon, so-called carbon captures. And then we have a several solution that can be applied in the cement plants, either a post-combustion solution, direct separation, or oxyfuel technologies that cement industry is currently developing in the cement plants. But I would like to already now mention that there are some CCU technologies that will allow us to use directly the exhaled gases from the cement plants or from the other sources. And now in the CCS and CCU, the other important bunch of technologies are either related to a storage and the situation here is relatively easy. The uh, concentrated and liquefied CO2 is transported to the storage places that in most cases in Europe currently developed the under North Sea storage in depleted uh, oil or, or gas fields. Regarding the utilization, there are a lot of technologies available to us, and those can be to produce fuels, biomass, chemicals, uh, out of the CO2 or food grade uh, or production of the food grade CO2. And then there is a lot of work uh, spent on those developments. I would just point it out that one of the challenges regarding those technologies is that those CO2, which is utilized or captured here, could be emitted either, in, in, for example, in the, in, in the combustion process or, or back to atmosphere. And so on the left, one more important technology to us, to us, this is the mineralization of the CO2. And now a mineralization, it is basically binding of gaseous CO2. So the CO2 that is in our waste uh, gases from the cement plants into an insoluble mineral. Insoluble, you can say as well, the thermodynamic stable mineral. So it's, let's say, bound forever. And the, the, the most simple mineralization reaction I have highlighted here, 
basically calcium oxide react, react with CO2 to produce uh, calcium carbonate. And the calcium carbonate is obviously a stable mineral uh, in at, at correct condition of the surface. But as what is important in the reaction, as you know, cement industry produce, produce several million tons of CO2. Since you can easily calculate molar weight of CO2 is about 44 grams per mole molar weight of calcium oxide, it's about 56 uh, gram per mole. You can easily calculate for this million tons of CO2, we do need to have a million tons of a calcium oxide that is ready to react with CO2 to produce this insoluble calcium carbonate. So let's look more carefully um, what are the potential sources of the calcium oxide. And here on the left hand side, I, I plotted to you uh, available, availability of the cementitious materials that we are using um, in our industry. And we have one more, more extra. So, you, and I divided those materials into carbon the table, all those who cannot react with uh, calcium, uh, with CO2. And obviously, those carbon the table, those containing calcium oxide. And you see the potential candidate for the mineral carbonation are, for example, slag and flag ash. However, that, that's here we have challenged that those materials are mostly already used for the production of cement, production of the composite cement. So they are not available for the carbonation reactions. Of course, there are still available uh, streams of the materials like a steel slag that could be used for, for carbonation. We have another materials which is maybe not cementitious materials, it's a magnesium silicate. That's obviously there is a lot of those materials that we can use, and millions of millions of tons. However, this advantage of uh, magnesium silicates here is that the, those materials would require high temperatures and pressures. So a difficult technology on top of the other challenges. And then we have a Portland cement. Basically, obviously, a clinker contains more than 60% CO2, and so it can, and uh, I will show you in the next slide, it can easily react with CO2, so it can be used for the mineral carbonation in a very similar reaction to this shown here. So what we find out out of that, that the fresh and demolished concrete is a, is a large, large source of a reactive CO2 that can be used for the mineralization. And then within the next slides, I would like to share experience, our experience or my experience with a carbonation of a demolition concrete. So use a demolition concrete as a sink for the mineral carbonation. And in other words, we're gonna to speak about the carbonation and recycling process in the cement and concrete industry. And then schematically, this process, look, uh, I would like to discuss with you on the slide number six, that hopefully you can see. Please let me know if there is any, any problem with the quality or, or, or you don't see the presentation. See on the great boxes, I highlighted the traditional way of the production and the, or maybe more general on the service life of the cement. Cement is producing the cement pl plant out of the uh, raw materials and the cement is delivered to a concrete mixing plant when the conc concrete elements uh, are produced. And after the service size of the concrete, the concrete is demolished and frequently uh, the old concrete is stopped by or just used for the downside. And in order to assure the circular economy in the cement industry and assure, uh, to allow the sequestration of CO2, we want to change and we are changing with this way of using the cement the first one we need to recycle it all concrete and improve separation of the concrete into the uh, coarse aggregate sand and a cement paste what we call recycled concrete paste of course the sand and aggregates the recycled one provided that they are high quality can be used for the concrete production by saving the virgin materials now, the RCP, recycled concrete paste, can be used for the enforced carbonation. 
So CO2 mineralization with the help of LCP. And then what we find out, this carbonated recycled concrete paste can be used for the production of the new cement as a new supplementary cementitious material. And now I am reading the projects, which a target is to understand better and force carbonation and the properties of the cement with this new SCM. And I would like to share with you my experience on the next slides. So the CO2 mineralization in with uh, when applying hydration products, recycled so-called recycled concrete paste is a bit more uh, complicated, a complex reaction when you compare to the first one that I showed you on the slide number three. And this is because in the fully hydrated cement paste, as is typical for old concrete. We have a several hydrates, including calcium portlandite, CSH phases, or calcium alumina hydrates, including either ettringite or hemi monocarbonate or monosulfur. And then what we find out that all those hydrates are reacting with CO2 to produce two main carbonation products, calcium carbonate and alumina silica gel. What we on top find that this alumina silica gel is a putzolanic material, allowing us to use this composite as a supplementary cementitious materials. The carbonation of, uh, um, of the cement paste is associated with the characteristic uh, evolution of the product's morphology. On the left hand side, you see typical backscatter electron imaging of the cement paste, which is partially hydrate, uh, hydrated with all the hydrates and unreacted uh, cement uh, grains. And after the carbonation, a wet carbonation process, it looks like that. And this is a press tablet, one more time, backscatter electron image of such a paste. And you see here this blouse or, uh, or violet points, this is a calcium carbonate. What's happened during the carbonation, we are leaching calcium out of original cement paste particles into the solution where it precipitates as a calcium carbonate. During the wet carbonation, it is more, mostly um, uh, calcite, at normal temperature and pressure. And then you see this greenish area, those are the relics of the cement paste grains, which uh, which are basically now uh, uh, this alumina silica gel. And so there are two very important information related to this carbonation reaction. The first one, it is a rapid reaction. And this is particularly important. This is a rapid reaction at normal temperature and pressure. And so we are able to achieve 80% of the reaction only after 20 to 30 minutes. Please note, still at 20 degrees Celsius and at normal atmospheric pressure. It's a huge difference comparing, for example, to a carbonation of magnesium silicates like olive. What is very important as well, this reaction is robust reaction conditions. And so what we can find out that we can use directly the gases from the cement kiln to carbonate the material. And this we have proved during the um, a plant trial in Brevik cement plant that we, have, that we have conducted already two years ago. Of course, we are maybe not at the a, a lot of experience, but still there is a, 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 we are lacking of the real industrial experience regarding this process, and we are currently working on that. Um, as I told you, the uh, alumina silica gel is a putzolanic material. And we know, of course, more about the properties of this uh, gel. And the first one we know it is an amorphous material. And from an MR study, an example you see here on the right hand side, we know that the structure of the gel is similar um, to a uh, the uh, amorphous phase, for example, in the fly ashes. And this has a lot of uh, advantages. Comparing to fly ashes, however, this amorphous phase here 
um, it is characterized by very high surface area. And so in the range of more than square meter per gram. And altogether, it is amorphous, similar structure to other flyers or silica fume. Um, and uh, a high surface area, the brick, this brings a very rapid and nice putzolanic reaction, and so nice supplementary cementitious material. I mean, however, it's not everything beautiful. You have here on the right hand side the, uh, the mass balance calculation of the carbonated recycled concrete paste, and then we have performed those experiments in our laboratory. You see here that after the carbonation, the, the carbonated paste is composed mainly in, in the calcite on unreacted material. And in fact, the content of the gel, of the composition, as I told you, similar to the flyer, is relatively limited. So this is a kind of disadvantage because we have a little uh, mat reactive material into our new supplementary cementitious materials. However, please note, please note that this, this is somehow compensated by the very high reactivity of the gel. While one more disadvantage, of course, the high surface area, like in the case of a calcium clay, for example, will result in the high water demand uh, in the composite cements. We are currently working with those challenges. OK. As I told you, the gel contains putzolan. It is very reactive. And we can see the results of this putzolanic reaction in terms of the evolution of the compressive strength of the composite cells. And then on the right hand side, I would like to show you um, uh, the evolution of the compressive strength of the free composite cements, the, those tests we conduct in our laboratory. A reference CL cement, this is a, 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 a let's say, clinker blended with a limestone at 40% replacement ratio, a typical. Uh, putzolanic uh, cement, so clinker blended with flyash and limestone at the same replacement ratio, and then our new composite cements, and here C, and this is a carbonated cement based, those CC pigments here. All those three cements are characterized by the same replacement ratio of the clinker by the supplementary cementitious materials. And you see the evolution, and you see here clearly the contribution of the putzolanic reaction of the alumina silica gel from uh, on the compressive strength and very nice increase of the compressive strength already at one, two, and seven days. However, at 90 and 80 days, as you see, the flyage is catching up, it is reacting slowly, and then we have a similar, uh, similar compressive strength. So overall, I show you one of the carbon capture and utilization technology that we are developing. And I show you that demolished demolish concrete, and particularly a cement paste uh, and recycled concrete paste out of the demolished concrete is a potential important sink of uh, CO2. The CO2 mineralization when application has a big scale up potential. And this is, for example, a low energy approach since we are, we are able to conduct rapidly and with high, and with high hydration degree, the reaction at normal temperature and, and pressure. And this gives us promises and partially confirmed during our industrial trials, as I show you, that this, uh, th this kind of a technology has a um, uh, have a high potential for, for industrial application. We are, of course, building a lot of CO2. And theoretically, we can, we can bind during the carbonation of RCP all the CO2 emitted during the clinker production from limestone, the composition, and on top, and on top, on top, uh, we can use this carbonated material as a new SCM, which further allow us to reduce the clinker content in the cells. Okay, and those are the, the most important conclusions. Of course, uh, carbonation of the recycling concrete paste is not the only one solution that is possible for the cement industry. And on this schematic picture, I show you um, the other solution that, uh, that, that are potential and we are partially investigating. And you can, for example, apply uh, the CO2 during the concrete making itself, either during the cocking mixing or 
apply CO2 in order to uh, accelerate the hardening of the concrete. And so we are ca calling such a process uh, carbonation of the, of the fresh concrete or carbonation hardening. In this process, instead of using hydration reaction, we are using a carbonation reactions to make a hardened concrete element. And then the, on the just really going from the fresh concrete at the end of the cycle life of the cement, we can use recycling, uh, we can improve basically recycling of the concrete over the carbonation of LCP, as we have been discussing during this talk, or, car or carbonation of recycling aggregate to improve their properties and to bind the, the materials. And of course, this graph does not show all the possibilities. We have still more, more possibility of how to use the CO2 into within the cement industry. Okay, so thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm really happy to answer your comments or, or questions. Hey, thank you, Marcia. Uh, you should I stop sharing the presentation now? Uh, I guess I don't know if people maybe keep sharing it in case anybody says, "Oh, can you refer back to slide, whichever." Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, first of all, I'll just turn it over to the audience. Um, does anybody have any questions? You can either, like I said, you can either put this into the chat or raise your hand. I can see there's a couple of hands raised already, so we'll take them. I'll say in the order in which they appear on my screen, if that's okay. So I think first, uh, John P, is that John Provis, perhaps? I don't know. Oh. Um, um, <coughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So John, so, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, uh, my question, um, if you've um, separated out the uh, cementitious part of the concrete, why not just feed that straight back as feedstock to the cement plant? That would give you, in my opinion, um, a double win. One being that um, you wouldn't have to calcine limestone because you're bringing in the lime. But the second one would be that you could reduce your fuel consumption because the calcination of the limestone is the number one, uh, is the main uh, heat, uh, absorbing factors, so you could greatly reduce your heat consumption. You would have less CO2 because you'd have less combustion and you wouldn't calcine the lime and you could skip that step of carbonating the lime. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for this question. And this is a clear why one of the straightforward solution that here it is shown on my graph and that we are as well considering uh, Within, uh, within our projects. And this is all what you told is true. Of course, the biggest advantage here is on the uh, reduction of the needed limestone content uh, for, for, the, for the clinker production. However, there is a several uh, technological challenges that I prefer not to discuss today. However, I would like to point out the uh, the advantage of the process of the carbonation of the recycled concrete paste, because we are gaining here in terms of the CO2 in the in, in two places. Of course, we are sequestering a lot of CO2, and basically, as I told theoretically, all the CO2 used from the um, from the clean, uh, limestone that composed during the clinker production, and then this is very important. Or oh, the second advantage, we are able to use the carbonated material as a replacement for the composite cement production. And as I show in the example for the higher replacement ratios in the range of 40% or more. So we are so to say gaining within this process in terms of the CO2 twice. And this is very important advantage in our eyes. But we are of course considering several solutions and we are not, not saying that this is the only one solution. Thank you, Martin. Uh, um, hope that answers the, the question. Uh, but if, if not, then John, if you want to speak again or no? Okay. So the next next raised hand 
is Cyril Dunant. Hi, thank you. Uh, yes, hi, hi Majesh. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the great presentation. I, I had similar question to to to, to John's, but uh, my I wanted to know. I was curious. How do you do the separation? Because of course, it is in the first place quite difficult. But that seems to be a, a big uh, industrial challenge in your process. Never mind what you do with the base, but how, how do you get how, how do you get it to separate from the aggregate, which is it's so good at binding in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a uh, this is the part of the project that I'm not I am not uh, directly involved here in the separation, and we are currently uh, how to say. Um, in developing and, and considering several technologies, um, how to separate properly the, the concrete. And then basically, in most cases, those are mechanical treatment of the crush uh, recycled concrete. And then I do believe uh, in one, two years, I will be able to give you a final answer, thanks to work to my colleagues, which technology is good. But I am convinced that we we gonna to to reach the targets. I don't know in the range of um, having sixty to eighty percent clean paste. What I mean here, well, uh, uh, clean paste that is the 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 RCP will contain say, more than sixty, maybe eight, I mean, even eighty uh, percent of the clean cement paste, I, and I the hope, rest would be the aggregates. I hope you'll do better than sixty percent because. You just 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 crushing about right the, the concrete and, and sieving out the, the, the finds, you will get 60%. Of course. Yeah, yeah, no, no. There are the special technologies on top of the recycling process that are today apply in order to target it separate paste out of the sand and aggregates. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we've got questions now, a couple more raised hands, or a few raised hands and also a couple of questions started to come in from text so uh i'll do them in the order in which i saw them arrive so again sid profiler next uh, i met you and leon uh it's nice to meet you and thank you for a nice presentation Hi. So, okay i'm from concrete for change and we are doing in kind of a technology which is kind of associated with what you are doing and i have a range of questions i make it really short as much as possible so my very first question, in terms of using CCS for uh, concrete, uh, do you have any idea if you use CCS carbon capture and storage for your cement, how much it can increase the price of cement roughly? No, oh, uh, I am on the technical side of the process okay. and then I will not allow myself to answer this question. And, uh, and, and anyway, I would uh, encourage you to wait till we are ready with uh, technology development related to the three stages of the process. Okay. Please know that we are in the middle of the way and we ourselves eat and we don't know exactly how it's look like. And such, yeah. in such a situation, it's quite difficult to give you a reliable number. And I do not want to give you unreliable numbers. Yeah, thank you. Because I was just a bit curious about that, and you speak about uh, spoke about the food grade CO two, which, looking at combination of your flue gas, I think it will be really expensive. You should strip a lot of different yes. gas. Yes. Yes. And I was just curious mm. how you can com uh, compare that, for example, with brewery or different industries. No, 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 no. This is very important. As I told you, we need a million of tons of treated materials, and that's why I already on the slide number three pointed out not treated gas. And this is one of the most important advantage of the carbonation overall of cementitious material. Mm -hmm. Either you are carbonated recycled materials, whatsoever. You are mm -hmm. carbonated fresh concrete or carbonating steel slags, let's say, you will be still allowed to use the gas containing about 20% CO2. Yeah. And this is what we have in exhale gases. So basically you don't need this part. I'm not saying always, yeah, but there is a high potential that you will not need this part of the CCU technology. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Obviously, in that on that note, still you need to re strip some kind of uh, some part of your combination. For example, you have edges, you have a, a few acid and different material in your flue gas that you should remove from that. Uh, and my next question in terms of separation cemented use material from your end of life cycle concrete. Uh, what, what, how it, uh, your life cycle analysis look like? Because 
I know that it's possible to do that. Actually, I have I've done a bit of work on that. But normally, in terms of life cycle analysis, removing that part, it what I've seen is has a really high operational emission. And you have one assumption. I've been really curious about that. That with any method that you use to separate your cementitious material from your aggregate, their strength is different. We have a lot of concrete when you try to crash that by different method. Aggregates are weaker than binder, so it's not possible basically to separate them from each other. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do some interruption inter internet, but what I am not directly involved in LCE. However, I do believe it, it will be positive for us because our initial um, experience in this separation part, so once we have in, in, in our facility uh, recycled concrete, is that um, the, the, the energy penalty for, for this process will be only, let's say, 10% of the energy grinding for the cement. So we are um, developing the pro processes that in those terms will be cheap. Okay. And I, I don't think so, just, just the separation in terms of the energy cost or so, this should be not a big challenge. So thank you very much, Matthew. I'm conscious about time and just yeah. finish my questions now. Thank you a lot for the questions. If you, if you have any more, it would be great to discuss with you. Please contact me over an email or something. I soon. have a lot and I just speaking mm -hmm. with Nina to be contacted with you and Nina also is here. So we will have a meeting later. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'm aware of we've got a couple of um, number of questions coming in still. So I think the next one was Rupert with a raised hand. Then I'll go to the chat and come back to Faya. After that. Okay, thanks, Leon. Um, and thank you, Maciek. Um, uh, great technology, I think. Um, so well done to, to you and the team. Um, I asked this just out of curiosity, so don't take it in a, neg in a negative way, but you said you did this in, um, I think your initial experiments were about two years ago, right? Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about what's happening behind the scenes? Um, you're doing like scaling up of the technology. I'm just interested in like what the barriers are and um, okay. are, there new, are there new problems that you're seeing now, which we can learn a bit more about. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you are speaking about the carbonation technology, super, yeah? Yeah, your um, cement from carbonated um, cement paste technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, so currently, of course, I, I am I am on the scientific level working Heidelberg cement. So I am at the level of the grams and uh, let's say several, several kilograms. And this we can do relatively easy um, in our laboratory. And, and uh, Regarding upscaling, the, the biggest challenge that I see personally is that such a technology does not exist yet. We are one of the first people overall who are trying to develop, and not trying, I'm sorry, we are developing uh, and uh, uh, such a technology. And I think this is one of the biggest challenges. So it's, it's, if you compare yourself working in the laboratory, you are getting this just the first, uh, uh, first idea about the project. And you need to develop this, uh, uh, tools to, to 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 make the project at all. And this is this is, I think, uh, just the challenge. However, I, I I don't think so. It's a particular a big challenge because, as I told, we we neither using hydrothermal conditions, we are nor using uh, high temperature nor high pressure. All those processes in terms of the carbonation can be done at uh, at normal temperature and pressure. So obviously. We don't develop any second kiln there. It's just just uh, uh, either wet or solid solid reactor. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. So thank you. Next, I'll move over to the chat before coming back to the raised hands. Um, so Paul Howler asks: Does the enforced carbonation into cement production? result in reduced CO2 absorption during the life of the concrete. So how does it, I guess, how does it affect the carbonation performance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the here, well, I will maybe go, the performance overall, the poor, the perform, I think the best slide is here. The performance of the new composite cements that we are developing 
The new composite cement that contains a re a carbonated recycled concrete paste, so what we call CRCP, maybe we need to find an easier way to call it, um, will be similar or is similar to a typical composite cement for the similar replacement ratio. So you have, in general, you will have a general durability similar uh, like for the flyer system, or maybe even better because here with the reaction so, so faster, but we don't expect to have um, extra, extraordinarily better or worse, clearly not worse performance, either carbonation or the durability parameters comparing to a similar composite cement. And this is in purpose, it's very important that the chemical composition of the react part here is very similar to the flyer. So it gives us confidence that the, you know, the phase assemblage, the porosity will be similar. New cements, uh, when you compare to the flyer containing cements with a similar composition, and so will be similar performance. Okay. Right. Thank you. So we, we had another similar question about, uh, about um, reinforcement long term durability so I think you've just answered that one but how uh, there's a question about regulations and codes and how this fits in with that I guess uh, oh, I guess this is, this is very guess straightforward situation. yeah we don't have it doesn't such a mm. yeah. however we are we are either internally or with external partners over the for example uh, the German government founded project Projects are working currently on development, uh, de uh, development of the codes and in general regulation, which allow us in the future to produce and use such a cement in concrete technology. Yeah. I guess the point is, is if the codes don't allow it, the situation should be that the codes need to change, not that the technology is wrong. But that's that's my own personal view and soapbox. So anyway, um, another question from Jessica saying, are there, are there any reductions in strength when the concrete is recycled into new cement? Um, so does it, I guess, yeah. Is there, is there any loss of strength in using this material compared to anything else, which I think you showed? No, it is the, the slide number 12. Yeah. Basically, we are using this uh, carbonated recycled concrete paste as a, a supplementary cementitious material characterized by pozzolanic properties, and it's so behave like uh, like in the seventh year. The only maybe two comments regarding that one. The first one, this gel, as I explained, is extraordinarily rapidly reacting, or is characterized by very rapid pozzolanic reaction. And so at this level of maybe, maybe one, two days, we are getting at least 50% of the reaction. So we're gonna to gain faster compressive strength when you compare to the, for example, flyer. Okay, and this is very important. The second comment, as I told you, will be at the end, very, very uh, similar Puzzolanic cement. Okay, that's great, thank you. We've got two, two raised hands and possibly one, maybe one more question in the text as well, but I'm aware of the time. Um, but quickly, if we go over to Faya, you had your hand raised. So. Yeah, hello. Uh, thanks so much, Jack, for your presentation. <clears throat> um, more from a, a sort of broader policy and future looking circular economy perspective, uh, that the kind of whole sort of idea of circular economy is to reduce the amount of uh, demolition waste and, uh, you know, to move towards zero demolition. Um, so there's even sort of roadmaps for zero demolition by 2050 and stuff. So I just wonder about the availability of demolition, construction and demolition waste and the proximity of it to the factories. Uh, so, you know, in terms of the actual sort of life cycle assessment of the carbon flow, you know, if you're having to ship it in to your factories, then that's going to add to it. Um, and, and different countries have di very different profiles in terms of the availability of uh, uh, demolished and recycled uh, concrete and aggregates. So how does that factor into each um, operator's uh, business costs and stuff? And I just think that this is gonna change quite radically over the next couple of decades as well. So yeah, how did... Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, I, I fully support uh, your, your comments. It's clear our process depends on the availability of the materials at the, at the starting point. And, and we are familiar with the, some countries there is maybe more recycling, the other less. We are rather um, at the beginning of the way here and, and it needs to be a common effort of the society, maybe the, the, the industry and the politicians to assure that recycling happens or will happen everywhere. And then, then we will be able to apply our technology since we're going to develop at that time this free technological steps. And then clear, we, we are, there is still a lot of work ahead of all of us at all, all, all uh, in the all stakeholders involved in the in the cement concrete and building industry overall yeah to assure the full recycling of the materials i personally think that such a process and similar processes from the technical point of view will allow a real uh, uh recycling economy here because we will be able to apply aggregates we're going to have a high quality aggregates that will can be used for production of the new concrete and those in the process what we have discussed to to, to really close the cycle with uh, all seven okay thank you um we've got three more questions and then i think we'll have to bring it to a close because we're yeah we're just coming just gone quarter past the hour now so next uh Muzumil, if you want to ask um, lovely presentation. Uh, Thank you. I, I'll echo everybody else. Fantastic and fab, exciting technology. My question is, and perhaps I missed it, is that when you are when you did these studies, were you using recycled paste, which was made from concrete, which was originally made from a lab, or what was your origin of the recycled paste? And and the question really is to try and understand that if you have different sources of recycled paste um from the real world made from different combinations here. sorry uh, can you repeat the second part of the question the question oh. is really that um if you have the recycled paste coming from different cement and combination types in the field how does it affect your your luminous silicates gel which are formed through inflows carbonation yes in the okay Right. Mm, okay, so to answer the first part of the question, as here shown on the slide, this additional slide that I have, we have started, this, uh, we use the synthetic materials, because we, uh, at, the, at the very beginning, we want to check if at all the process work, so we have took a Portland cement, make a hydrated paste over several months of hydration, and then just we dry the paste and ground it, and then, uh, um, um, uh, uh, make all the carbonation and performance testing later we complete. The, the, this few years ago, so the, the first size we have done maybe four or five years ago, we have had no industrial materials available at that time. And the second point, which I'm still using synthetic paste because I do control the starting materials as much as I need to uh, use scientific, scientific methods to, to, to analyze the, either the carbonation or so on all those uh, processes. However, today already in our laboratory, we are, we are quite advanced in testing different uh, industrial materials. To answer the second question, we have done uh, a bigger study um, on the quality of, uh, uh, of the paste. So for example, we have done synthetic materials based on SEM1, so neat Portland cement containing 70 Portland clean cut and the slag cement containing 50% the slag and more. And we have compared the carbonation characteristic of such a material and later on performance in the, in the cement. And there are differences, but uh, I would rather call, uh, rather call not so important. One of the key parameters, however, what we have done uh, uh, out is the content of the paste in the recycled concrete paste, so the cement paste. And th this needs to be as high as possible, since obviously the aggregates, independently what kind, um, they are not reactive with respect to uh, um, uh, carbonation and hydration. In other words, they are neither sequester CO2 and not bring later on the compressive system. So in order to maximize the content of the alumina silica gel in paste, we need to, we need to maximize the content of the paste itself in the RCP. 
and this is still still ongoing work and we'll have more and more information that I hopefully will be able to share with you next years. Okay, thank you. Um, and so I think bring to one final question about um, are there any so given the higher rate reactivity, this is from Sam, are there any real rheology issues to address? Is the rheology affected at all? Yes, of course. And then we have the similar challenges as when applying a calcium and clay cements. And so uh, the, 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 the carbonated gel, as I told you, is characterized by very high surface area, like for example, metacaoli. And of course, the exactly the same characteristic of the materials later on in the cement and then high water demand need. And we are, but we have, a, we, with our partners, we have a solutions for that. Okay, thank you. And then a sort of follow up question to this as well is about do you have any strength data beyond 180 days or any shrinkage data? So, again, mm -hmm. yes, we have a strength data be, be up to one year, I believe, and there is no extraordinary evolution. I mean, this very, very slow increase of the, um, of the strength. And I hopefully will be able to share with you this data soon over the scientific papers that we are preparing. And then regarding the shrinkage test, those tests we, we are initiating, but we haven't seen any, any challenges regarding the uh, shrinkage of such a material. Okay, thank you very much. So I think that brings us to the end. It's now, you know, we, it's coming up to five to five to two UK time. So uh, don't want to keep everybody too long. We, we like to try and say that these are a nice short lunchtime uh, presentation. I'm sure you've got lots to do as well. So uh, I've never quite still after two years, not quite worked out how to how to thank you. We, you know, I've, I've been looking for the, the clapping hand emoji to come from the bottom work out how to put that on. No, thank I'll, you, just say, I'll, I'll just say thank you on behalf of everybody at the centre. Very interesting presentation. I have lots of other questions, but I, can, I might drop you a line mm -hmm. anyway. Um, yes, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank you, Maciek, for your, your time. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Uh, like I say, the recording will be released on the uh, centre website next week, and you'll all get an update about that. So once again, thank you very much. And thank you, Leon, for inviting me for this meeting. Thank you, Lisa, for supporting me when, when preparing and follow you for very interesting questions. And if you if you see any more points to discussion or if you have a comments, please do not hesitate to contact me. I do believe there is a my email in either invitation or you can yeah, I can provide you with. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you.